Zero accounting software. Accounts receivable graphs. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation, scrolling in a bit, holding down control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 175% zoom in. We're gonna be opening the demo company, but doing so with the reset button, resetting the data and opening the demo at the same time. We're duplicating some tabs up top so that we can put our major financial statement reports in them as we have done every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicate a tab to duplicate it. Going back to the middle tab, accounting drop down, balance sheet report, back to the tab to the right, accounting drop down, income statement report, and then back to the tab to the left. Let's change the dates on this one to bring it up to 2022. 2022, end of the month. That's the setup process update that we have been doing every time. We have now been looking at other reports, most of which will tie out to one or multiple line items on these major financial statement reports. Now we're gonna be looking at possibly making graphs from those reports with the use of uh, exporting to Excel. So let's go to the tab to the right. I'm gonna right click on this tab and duplicate this tab. And then let's open up our reports, accounting dropdown and reports. Now note that you've got some nice uh, reports that we've looked at in prior presentations here that have some analytical kind of components to them, some of which being some kind of graphs and charts and other types of software often have some pie charts and whatnot that are in there by default. However, uh, you, you, if you're doing the charts for external reporting, oftentimes it's useful to take a report and then make the chart or graph from it with Excel because you have a lot more flexibility to do that. And so we'll just give an example, maybe in a couple kind of things uh, where you could do that. For example, if you look at the balance sheet account, uh, we, we could think about like our whole asset breakout between assets, you know, liabilities, the vertical analysis is a percentage uh, kind of analysis that we looked at in a prior presentation. We can make a pie chart breaking out our, re our receivables versus our equipment and whatnot. Uh, we can also do it with our accounts receivable, which we'll look at this time, broken out say by uh, customer. So who owes us the money might be a nice visual to see in a pie chart kind of format. On the liabilities, we got the payables that we might wanna see in like a pie chart that we can kind of create. Those are good you know, pie chart components. On the sales side of things, we might wanna see our sales broken out by what we sold, by item. In, a, in like a pie chart or something like that, or, or graph pie charts are kind of nice sometimes with these kind of things. And then, and then you might also want to see it broken out by customer who you sold the money to. So for example, let's go to our reports over here and look at our accounts receivable uh, summary report. I'm going to open up the summary and then let's make this as of the end of December. And we've looked at this report in the past. I'm going to make it as of December 2022. And it's breaking out the totals by contact who those are those are customers. We have the total of 9,172.63, which ties out to the balance sheet here or it should. There it is. I want I might want to see that in a visual. So if I go back on over here, I'm going kind of quick. If I want to see that in a visual, like a pie chart, then I can export this and make a nice, quick, pretty easy pie chart from this data in Excel and have a whole lot more flexibility than if Zero tried to give me a, a custom pie chart within the system because Excel has a whole lot more flexibility. So we can do that fairly quickly. So let's do an example. We're gonna say uh, Excel here. Let's just export this to Excel. 
open up our data. And I know this isn't an Excel course, so I'll do this fairly quickly, but I think this is a, this exporting to Excel, a useful tool, not just with a zero, but any kind of database program will typically have the capacity to do this. And I think it's quite useful to know about. Okay, now I usually like to see the grid lines. So to see the grid lines, go to view, and then I'm gonna say that I want to have the grid lines right here. And I'm also in a dark mode for Excel, so your your information up top might not be in the same color theme, but that's usually easier on the eyes, the dark mode, so I use that. Okay, then I can scroll up a bit, holding down control, scrolling up a bit. So I'm at uh, 205. I'm gonna keep this as my data tab and then copy another tab to the right. The way you can do that is, is I'm gonna hold down control and then left click and then drag this to the right. So now I've got two copies of this tab, the second one with a number two on it. And so now what I'd like to do is just adjust this data to have what all I need to make a graph. So what I need is really this and this. I could make the graph just straight from this data, but I'm gonna trim it down so I can make it a little bit easier to work with with basically just these two columns. Now to do that, you gotta be careful that you're not messing up any formulas. So you would think here, this is a hard coded number. There's not a formula in it. This one has a formula summing up up top, but all these are hard coded numbers. They don't have a formula as you can see here. So I could just delete these columns from B. I'm gonna put my cursor on the B and scroll over to F. And then that selected area, I'm gonna right click on it and delete it. I also don't need the title up top, so I'm gonna remove the title from uh, column or row one. I'll put my cursor on the one and then down to, let's go down to five here and then right click and delete that. I don't need the percent total down below. I'm gonna put my cursor on 10, right click and delete that. Now, oftentimes also it's nice to have one format for all the cells. You can see this one has Arial eight and over here on my other cells, I've got Arial 11. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep 11 as my default. So I'm gonna put my cursor on the cell out here, home tab, format painter, and then I'm gonna paintbrush the entire worksheet to be that default formatting. And then I'm gonna right click on these cells and format them, right click and format. I usually make them currency, negative numbers bracketed, no uh, dollar sign and uh, we don't really need the decimals but eh, we'll take the decimals off and so there it is and then these are kind of squished up up here so i'm going to double click on them to widen up the sales so that looks about right i'm going to scroll in a little bit more i'm at 200 right now so let's make it a little bit larger so now i could i could I'm gonna make this defined as my as my title by centering it and bolding it. And then I'm gonna add a table. Now note, I could just kind of sort this stuff by entering the data and the filter tabs and sort it, because I'd like to sort it by total. But I tend to like to put a table in it because it makes me a little bit more confident that the, that the data hasn't been jumbled. So this total down here, I'm gonna actually delete this total down here don't want the total I just want the data and then I'm going to select this entire thing go to insert and then insert a table around it so that'll give me a table it's going around all my data I'm going to say my table has a header because I put this header uh, line on it so it'll create a header row there so there we have it so there's our table we can adjust the look of the table but I'll just keep it at the default look and then I could add a total column if I so choose. So I could say table, I want a total row. That's why I deleted the total because I can add it thusly. So there's the 9173. I can double check to make sure that I didn't lose anything by going back over here, 979173 about because it's rounded to decimals now. Okay, so then I would like to sort my table by the total over here sort it by the total and let's go i want it to go from z to a so now these are the people that owe us the most money to the least money and now we can create a nice pie chart with this so i could easily then go into here and just say okay i'm going to take this data and i'm going to go into the insert and we're going to make a pie chart 
and we can make a pie chart like this. So boom. And then we can get very detailed in the kinds of pie chart that we want to be implementing, for example. So I'm going to pull that over here. They've got some default formulas up top. So this has the numbers in it and so on. You've got your percentages or the more information on the left hand side. Let's choose this one. Now you've got your what you've so then your table up top might be the AR accounts or so say accounts. Well, let's just get rid of the title for now just to make it a little bit larger. But you can add whatever title. Now these are kind of squished together. So you could format this to like remove these numbers or move them around. I won't go into a lot of detail on the positioning, but just note that you have a whole lot more flexibility than if a database program like a zero or if it like was like a QuickBooks or something just gave you some default uh, settings for them because Excel gives you a whole lot more flexibility. You got different color schemes that you could choose and so on for it as well. So the other thing that uh, I just want to point out here is that uh, if these are too close, sometimes we don't have that many customers here. But if I had a lot of customers or if I want to spread this out a little bit more, I might say like these last two, for example, maybe I group them together in their own in their own area. Maybe even like this la these last three add up to 901. So maybe instead of doing this, I go 901. And then I delete these last two, delete, and then I make this other. So now it's spaced out a bit so, so that we can see a, a, a pie chart that, that's not so squished together in these percentages. So it's a nice kind of bold looking pie chart. So that's you know one way that you can do this. Now notice that you can you can then add another tab over here if you so choose. I could copy this tab and put it on the right and I could I could then try to situate it on my page I could make the page landscape possibly I could say I want to orient it landscape it didn't do it landscape orientation sometimes it gets a little finicky there it goes and then you know you can widen this out and then if you wanted to print this out you might want to hide your data tabs so I might say, like if I had multiple sheets that I was printing out, I might hide this one. I might say, hide that tab. And then if I went to file and print, then I can print the entire workbook. If I so choose, I'm only on the selected chart. Let's go here, file and then print. And then I can print the entire workbook, but it's not including that tab that I hid. So that allows you to have the data tab, right? That you can have in your worksheet, but still be able to print it all out using that cute PDF printer onto one sheet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna then, I'm holding down shift to select both of them, right click and unhide. And then you, you can also make, if I go back to this first one, like this data down below, you could make like a, uh, a pie, like a, another graph from that. So you might say you've got the stuff that is current. You've got the stuff that is current. You've got the stuff. Let's do it this way. This is current. You've got the stuff that is one to 30 days or whatever. 31 to 60, 61 to 90, and then older. And then I'll pull up my totals here, which is zero and this and this and this and this. Right. And I can, I can max, I can make that a little bit larger so I could see it. And then I might say, this is my, these are my, you know, date versus amount amount and then you could do the same thing here i could make a little table from it i'll make this bold so it knows it's a it's the header line i'll select these and go to insert a table boom we don't really need to have a table but i'll do it anyways and then i can make another and then i can add a total line here and so there's the same total 
And then I can make another chart with these, right? So I could say, let's make another kind of chart. This might lend itself to a insert of just this kind of bar chart, something like that. I'll get rid of the title for now. And so boom. So there we have it, but that's a nice kind of pictorial way that you might see, you might want to show the data. And then I can, I can also copy that and put that over here. And so now I've got my, my last sheet that just has these nice charts. And if you're providing your data uh, to someone, you could put this in your workbook and, and, and basically print it out along with everything else. And you've got these nice kind of visuals that you can customize within Excel where you have a lot more flexibility to do so.